Hello, hello everybody. Wow, we have a full house, people coming in, people going out. Please come and join us at the front. We have plenty of space. Those who are leaving, please can you do it in silence? Those who are, want to join us, there's plenty of room at the front. Yes, 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 we are going to talk about Huawei. How couldn't we? So welcome, welcome everybody. And the title of the, this uh, keynote is quite an intriguing, don't you think? And you have to say, yes, yes, and I ask you, what is the title? Oh, I forgot forgotten to read the program. Okay, the title is Huawei and the Grail of Darwin. Intriguing, yeah? As you know, Huawei has grown enormously and is the second, manufacturer, the second largest manufacturer of smartphones in the world with more than $100 billion in revenue. $100 billion in revenue, not bad. But it also found itself at the center of the worldwide latest information and customers' minds. Well, today's keynote with this intriguing title, The Grail of Darwin, what could that be about and how are we? Do you think it's the survival of the fittest? Rhetorical question? Well, all the answers to this and more are coming from our next, next speaker. He is the VP of Huawei Mobile Services Europe at Huawei. Please, let's welcome Dr. Jaime Gonzalo. Welcome. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Um, thank you very much. Thank you and welcome to the Huawei keynote of South Summit. My name is Jaime Gonzalo and today we will not talk about our phones. You already know everything about our phones in terms of Good battery, better chipset, best camera, fine. Today we'll talk about something that maybe you don't know and that only Huawei does, is unique to Huawei, and instead it can help all of you, no matter what is your sector of the industry. This domain we are talking about is what we call the intelligent storytelling ecosystem. And it bases, it focuses on user acquisition and retention. The grail of Darwin, is a representation of our quest for permanent evolution. Not change, but evolution. So let's see if the clicker follows my lead. Mm -hmm. OK, doesn't seem to follow. Yeah, fine. OK, very good. So change versus evolution. The purpose of change is to preserve the status quo. Can we move on to the next uh, click, sorry? So um, the purpose of change is to preserve status quo, to replace parts that don't work in a system to keep things running as they are. The purpose of evolution is to render the status quo obsolete, to move to the next barrier, to the next frontier. That's what we do in our hardware, in our software. So evolution towards where? Where are we heading? We are heading towards a fully connected future. In that future, you know, you read the news, and there is self-driving cars, smart homes, smart cities, parking lights that detect uh, movement, and then they turn higher, lower with artificial intelligence. We are going to that future in which each of us will own 1,000 smart devices. Currently, maybe you have one or two. Maybe you have a smart band. You have a smart speaker. So if you have any of these, how does it all start? You get it out of the box, then what? Then you configure it with a phone. So it means that the phone is the neural brain of a family of eight different blocks of intelligent devices that enable unlimited possibilities in all the domains of life in entertainment, in uh, travel, in um, office, in medical, in whatever. One plus eight plus N. Okay? So this evolution of connectivity has an evolution in the business models. What I'm going to tell you is something very clear. I will use the example of the video game industry that I know very well. The old model of games was about, okay, buy your game, and then whatever you do after that is your problem. 
If you play or not, it's up to you. Same happens with the cinema. You buy your cinema ticket, and then if you decide to sleep through the whole movie in the cinema, it's up to you. It's fine. Well, with the new era of mobile games, as South Park explains, with freemium, getting the game is free. And then the more you use and you, get, you keep engaged with the service, the more chances you have to get monetized. So the main difference is the business model is that previously we had um, a focus on the pre-acquisition moment. You focus on people to buy you. Once that they buy you, okay, thank you very much, bye, enjoy. In the new model, you focus especially on the moment post-acquisition. Oh, you got my app. Okay, yeah, hello, let's talk. Oh, you register a profile in our account. Okay, very good, let's do things. Let's send push notification to you. Let's use it, let's engage. Let's do a lot of fun stuff together. Yes? These changes fundamentally also makes evolve the communication to the user, right? So, in the previous times, classically speaking, the communication happens offline. It happens physically, you know. Oh, it's after Christmas, let's go shopping, let's see what they have. You know, you go to the stores, find in there your communication to the user. That changed, evolved with the e-commerce era. This is not new, everybody knows. The e-commerce era, with 75% of internet users already embracing e-commerce, changed that, and then everybody, especially these people that we call suddenly digital marketers, started to put banners in every website. Well. This is what's happening. E-commerce is already starting to be obsolete. And this is not news, you know that. You know what is the next coming. What is the evolution of e-commerce? The M-commerce. So at this stage, there's 55% of internet users that prefer to do all the actions, all the purchase, everything in their lives, buy, um, book a taxi, um, um, order a pizza, book a flight, book in online, banking activities, no matter the sector, the phone remains the main window to interact. I would like to draw your attention to the last picture. Do you see anything? Do you notice anything weird? It's a group of millennials. They are meeting to watch TV together, and none of them is looking at the screen. And none of them is talking to each other, where actually they are talking to each other, just not verbally, not face to face. They are talking through their phones. So the mobile phone not only is the center of the future, but it's also the window of these people to the universe and the door of the universe to them. So, talking about the evolution, are you evolving to that era of M-commerce? Because in that era, the main challenge is to get the attention of these users. When your window is so small and you have to be there, some people and some companies are still using the second e-commerce trends for the M-commerce era. Why, how do you think these people in the last image feel when they are reading an article and you bombard them in the middle of the article with a pop-up with your brand? How do you think they feel about it? Wow, I love it, I'm going to spend so much money on this brand. Or they are thinking, this is quite bothering. I would like this ad to disappear so I can continue reading. When they are seeing their feed of their friends, and suddenly it gets interrupted to show a video of a brand that is interrupting the activity. Do you think that contributes for them to be engaged with you? Maybe it's time to change. Sorry, it's time to evolve and embrace the M mobile, uh, the mobile e-commerce evolution, the mobile commerce, and uh, understand what is driving the attention of the users. So yes, banners in social networks play a role because users we use social networks, but we receive 3,000 impressions per day. Now we are in the middle of the day somehow, so you already received about 2,000. 2,000 marketing impressions on your phones until now. How many of them did trigger an impulse of spend on you? How many you remember out of 2,000? Do you remember 10, 5, 0? Because that's not the way. It's not about bombarding with images. It's about understanding that social networks play a role, but also users use the phone as their identity. They configure it in a way that it feels personalized for them. They consume more and more video content. Music, what happens with music and mobile? You go to a concert, it's not guaranteed you will like the music, but it's guaranteed there will be people recording videos about the music that they will never watch again. 
and even fun situations, it seems necessary to filter fun through a mobile to make it even more fun. Otherwise, it's like incomplete. This that I'm describing, ladies and gentlemen, this is a life cycle. The user, when you as mobile phone users, when do you use your phone? In the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening or at night or you're waiting for the bus or in the toilet or when you wake up in the morning all the time. All the time. The mobile is versatile and you need to adapt to this life cycle and that is what Huawei has created. So if you are not paying attention until now, I recommend that you pay attention now because this is what nobody else is doing. A first party interconnected ecosystem in our phones designed for the future connected and for the current universe of the users of mobile. What does it mean, connected first party? It means first party. When you watch a movie of, let's say, Netflix or HBO, whoever, whichever great service you want to use, the TV where you watch it is not done by them. It's built by someone else. When you listen to a song of Spotify in a speaker, the speaker is not done by Spotify. It's done by someone else. So there are, of course, levels of compatibility. These services are built in joint R&D by Huawei with the machines. It means for the user, there is no better experience to watch video in a Huawei phone than Huawei video. That's already very good to engage and to deliver an optimal experience, but it's interconnected. It's an ecosystem. What it means, this is the example. Let's imagine you love the movie Braveheart, yes? You love watching Scottish people running around without trousers, and then what a movie service will recommend to you is amazing. Watch it again or watch another movie of the same actor, or a similar movie. But it will never recommend to you, oh, now that you are jogging and doing sports, why don't you listen to the soundtrack of this movie you like? Now that you are waiting for the bus, why don't you download a game of uh, strategy of ancient Britain? Now that you are in London, why don't you get a ticket of Madame Tussauds to see the statue of Mel Gibson with a blue face? It doesn't, because it's not an ecosystem. So your story is incomplete. And then you are in an ocean of apps, you are one in 2.4 million. You're an icon. The M-commerce era cannot be an icon. And I will tell you why. Let's imagine an app that you use all the time, every day, I don't know, WhatsApp. Do you use it because the icon was so green, so perfect circle with a phone inside that you had to get it? Because the banner you saw was amazing. You watch YouTube because it's so red and... The no. You watch them because someone you trust told you a story about it. Why did you open a Facebook account? You remember? Nothing to do with an icon, with exposure, with bombarding you. Somebody told you something and you trusted that person. Humans, how do they transfer knowledge from generation to the next one? By putting, pushing images or by telling stories, metaphors. That's how we have always done because that's how the human brain works. Stories, yes? So for those of you that start to understand that evolution means, evolution of business means embracing the mobile stories, we have good news. Because Huawei is a storyteller partner. We tell stories to 570 million people as we speak. Stories about what? Stories about content, stories about you. We are a platform. We don't produce content. We tell your stories, yes? 170 countries, and the best part is that users trust us more and more. Even this year, with all the drama in the press, we are going to ship more phones than last year because we are not an advertisement company. We don't care if you're a man or a woman or how old you are. We just care that you like Braveheart. So we are going to promote content that is good for you and is going to engage with you, and it's contextual and it makes sense, and there's a story around it. We focus on privacy and security and in protecting our users. And they know. So all this in theory looks very good. Let's see in practice what does it mean. So this is an example. Is there anyone in the audience who likes racing games, like car games? You can raise your hand so that we see. Yeah, there's, okay, there's some people, good. So it's your lucky day because in our app store, the main, the first icon in our game section is a racing game. Wow, for the icon mentality companies, this is the best that can happen to you, right? This is super engaging because you are very promoted. So for those of you who like these games, feel internally how impacted, how interested you feel about this icon. 
compared to waking up in the morning and the lock screen of your phone has a super sleek image of a racing car to say, good morning. You open the phone and it says, configure your phone for free with the background, with the icons that you want about the topic that you like. You know. And by the way, this all comes from a game called Nitro Nation that by clicking here, that's what the text is very small, but it says clicking here, you can download the game actually. A configuration store, a wallpaper store, is opening an app store. You continue, and then in the browser, when you go to the news page or whatever, there's a shortcut, a quick link to the game. A browser is opening an app store to download a content that is contextual. Then Huawei Video promotes a video at the top that is not an ad. It's a storytelling of a producer of the game. This is how we designed our Porsche. This is how we created... Um, whatever features of the game, these are the finals of an esports event, whatever. Again, we are talking to a fan of car games. Then in the afternoon, you get a push notification. Yes, you don't have the game yet. And you get a push notification about the game. For you developers, those of you who know that, you can only send push notifications to those who have your app. But we have created a connected ecosystem of first party. And we can do that on our own. So, Finally, if you click on any of them, where you get is to a reward. Get your Chevrolet Camaro for free. You know, a reward. So the experience is like something that is not an advertisement, it's something for you, it's valuable. And then our app store will be configured for that. This that you see here is an ecosystem of storytelling, intelligently done. So for those of you who said you liked racing games, you can compare the icon that you saw, how engaged you felt about it, with this. It's dimensionally different, yes? But here's the catch, here's the catch. This is a freeman world. Has any of you ever downloaded an app that you never opened? It happens, yeah? Yeah, I did, many did. So it's not about downloads. I got many downloads, nobody opened me, well done. So it's, it's about what to do after that. We need to keep engaged after that, and that's why when we have achieved even the redeem of the game and the code and so on, we go to the offline activation. We do PR. Everybody knows Huawei is a hot topic in the press now. People read about Huawei. We can talk stories about partners. We do events, people like me, events like this, talking about apps like Nitro Nation. Now you know this game because I mentioned it. Why don't someone like me speak about your game or your app or your service next time? Experience stores. We have 60,000 stores in the world selling Huawei phones, one in Gran Via in Madrid in the center of two floors that we can show to people, let them discover our phones and your app preloaded so that they discover together. They can try, they can touch. We have influencer channels that belong to Huawei and we promote apps like that one. We're promoting Wattpad. China, you're interested in China market? That's an obvious one. We know that market very well. And finally, social networks. You know, it's so easy to organize. Okay, you take a game, take a screenshot, the better screenshot with more likes wins a phone. Who from your audience of user base likes top quality phones with the best cameras? All of them. So it's very relevant. And here's your favorite slide in my presentation. It's free. We don't charge you for this because we are a platform of storytelling. You tell us a good story, a good value for our users, and we will do it for free. Not only that, we are going to invest $1 billion in creating a strong ecosystem for Huawei users. In diversification, uh, in different, different pots. It's about commercial part, it's about um, marketing, it's about engagement. If you have a good idea for Huawei users, you want to innovate, you have creation, we, you can talk to us. My colleagues are giving two speeches today, sorry, two workshops today to explain this in more detail and to partner with us. So how to do this? If you have a camera, I recommend you take a picture of that website because that's the beginning of the journey. It's very easy to remember anyway, developer.huawei.com. One million developers already registered. It's free and it takes about 30 minutes. You have global access to everything we are doing. And from there, you get reports, you manage your apps, you get APIs of development of AI, AR, VR, any advanced technology, and support. So if you are not part of our family of partners, and I'm sure that some of them will ring a bell and you might know some of them, there is no excuse. Come talk to us and let's grow together. And with that, I end my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. And remember, evolve with time. Thank you very much.